Here, together, we stand in solidarity with all of California's indigenous peoples. We acknowledge that our work takes place on the now occupied traditional lands of the Nisanan and Washoe peoples, who are the past, present, and future stewards of this place. We acknowledge this land was taken with neither compensation nor regard for the lives and ways of its original peoples until they had no lands left. We acknowledge that we are settlers here, that we live, love, and work on the land the Nisanan and Washoe tribes never ceded. Together, we can amend the tragic legacy of the past. So for those of you who have been able um, previous to this workshop, um, check out the website or attend one or other of the other sessions. Um, these are the essential programs <laughs> that you as grant writers, as, as applicants to the creative core will need to align your project to not all of them, but a minimum of one. And in many cases, as you develop your application, you'll become aware that there's an overlap. It might be that when you choose um, something connected with civic engagement, that that also includes something connected with social justice and community engagement. Mm -hmm. um, and that public health um, is very much connected with um, environmental justice and environment related issues. Um, so here they are, here, here's the gist of it. You as artists and culture bearers and organizations are invited to apply for funding to implement media, outreach and engagement campaigns that increase awareness for one or more of these program goals. And I'm just gonna stop there just for a minute to emphasize how important it is that you understand that you are mobilizing, you are engaging communities that you are serving and that you are um, shining a light on one or other of these issues. In many arts funded programs, and you're creating a project, something incredibly tangible. And we're sure that tangible things will come from this, but we're very interested in your process. So as you go forth in our applications, you'll notice that we're very keen to understand how you're engaging the communities um, and creating awareness for those communities as they relate, as your project relates to one or other of these program goals. So well, uh, sorry to interrupt, but yes. the screen is not sharing. Oh, I am so sorry. Um, let's 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 do this. That's my Saturday morning syndrome. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Gianna, you should have interrupted me before. <laughs> okay, great. So here we go. You can see them. Wonderful. You can see the program goals. So here's what you're creating awareness for. Environment related issues, such as water and energy conservation, climate mitigation, and emergency preparedness, relief or recovery. If you choose environment related issues, you do not need to choose all of those. Pick something and stick to it. Civic engagement, such as election participation, social justice and community engagement, and public health awareness messages, such as mitigating the spread of COVID-19. When I say such as, I've already said this before in other contexts, at the time that legislature passed this monies to be spent down on artists, creating awareness for these issues, we were in full throttle with COVID. So think public health broadly when you, when you consider this. Gianna, I'm gonna let you admit um, folks that are still coming into the room, wonderful. So I love this quote from Isaac Newton. Truth is the offspring of silence and meditation. I keep the subject constantly before me and wait till the first dawnings open slowly by little and little into a full and clear light. So why have I said that in relation to the program goals? Keep these program goals in front of you as you write your your grant so often as grant writers and I'm so as a creative myself I am so aware of my tendency to um, fall into an application or run at an application um, because I have something already in mind keep aligning this 
with, um, with one of your program goals, and you will see that all manner of opportunities open up. Align your grant proposal with the requirements and objectives of Upstate California Creative Corps. Make your application clear, relevant, concise, and compelling. And with that, share your story. If you are proposing partnerships, choose partners well. What will they bring to the table and what will you bring to the table? What we want to be able to say as we're sitting around the um, review panel table after the deadline has passed is, yes, this applicant is answering our questions and is paying attention. And seriously, if there's one, um, you know, the most important tip I can offer you is answer the questions, answer the questions. And if you're working late at night and it's confounding you, a question is confounding you, dwell on it, sleep on it, and, and you'll find that you're able to answer it the next morning. And if you're not, call us and we'll help you. Someone once said that you don't need certainty in life, just clarity. Know that the process of applying, in the process of applying, you will find clarity. Through focus, your vision for your project will become clearer and better. At the moment, you may have incredible ideas um, and you have no idea how much better those ideas are actually going to become as you apply them to the questions that we ask you. The very act of grant writing will lend confidence and will draw you closer to your community. So this is what our website looks like and, and for the creative core. Nevada County Arts Council has, as you know, many of you know, we have our, our own website. We actually have four websites. Um, I'm hoping that most of you who live in Nevada County will already be on our, within our artist directory, because that's another way that we keep um, track. Gianna, would you mind, um, yeah, popping the artist directory in there? Great, because if Nevada County artists are present, but not in our directory, which is free, um, it would be a wonderful opportunity for draw, to draw awareness for that. So there are certain key places on this specific Upstate California Creative Core website that you'll just want to know about. This is just a screenshot. Um, so uh, when you enter Upstate Creative Core, you'll see that there's an apply now button and you'll see that there are applications for download. And you'll see also there are grant guidelines in English and in Spanish. First place to start is grant guidelines. Read the guidelines. All kinds of questions are answered there. And then figure out from the guidelines which grant category, and there are three of them, we're going to look at those in a minute, that you want to align yourself with and create a proposal around and what's required for that. And then download as a PDF and just have that like lying on the kitchen table or your office or you're in your studio so that you can constantly refer to it, those questions, because by constant referral, those questions um, will become instilled and the answers will begin to develop. It's just a tip that I do for myself. I always print off the questions from the application and I just have them handy and I constantly refer to them. There's another page that's really important that you look at and it's our background page. And this explains exactly what the project, uh, what, the, what the program, the California Creative Core is, where it came from, what it's intended to do and serve, and, and why Nevada County Arts Council is the one that's offering this opportunity to the 19 county upstate region. You'll also find the program's goal, goals there, and you'll find our approach. And you'll find, for those of you who may be more experienced than others in grant writing, you'll probably find, I'm hoping you'll find, the actual drafting of an application a little bit easier. We've asked fewer questions than you might normally be asked if you applied for the state. And yet these are essentially state funds. Um, we've kept you know, the, our application format simple. Um, we want to be very flexible <clears throat> with the way we equitably, <clears throat> equitably distribute funds and um, we want you to succeed. So that's the background page. We've also got um, up here um, in the uh, terms and definitions link on the main navigation bar, you'll see a glossary here. And you can scroll down this page and find how we define 
Uh -huh. um, the issues that you will be drawing awareness for um, within the align, aligning yourselves to through the program goals. And in the case of, for example, environment related issues, which are so complex and so many, we even provide, if I were to scroll down this page on the website, a link to further notes on environmental related issues, just to help ground you and anchor you. So that's an important page. This is kind of a living document as we get more, as we get more questions about more, um, what does this mean? What does that mean? Um, we'll add to this. So keep your eye on, on this page. And then uh, the apply now page is very important. That's the one up here to the, to the right of the home page on the website. Here you'll find kind of so much. You'll find the English translations of the guidelines and the applications. You'll find a link to the online application portal. And although I prefer to write my applications for funding in a Word document or a Google document, or even by hand on paper, I ultimately um, you know, uh, will sort of plug into the online portal. But my suggestion is perhaps not to start with the online application portal. Just you know, have it offline first um, in your own way, and then copy and paste in the end. Um, and just to add, Eliza, um, it's a Spanish translation. Yes. Um, yeah. You said English translation, so we have so applications sorry. both in English and Spanish, um, as well as the guidelines. Thank you so much for that clarification. That would be pretty hopeless having English and English translations, wouldn't it? Please save us. Um, so um, we also have ongoing informational webinars, um, as a, sorry, ongoing weekly office hours starting next week. So you can drop in at any stage and ask your questions and receive guidance. All that can be found on the home page if you scroll down to the grant timeline. On this page, apply now is where you can also find, as well as the guidelines that you can you can download. Um, uh, where you'll find the three grant categories that you, you're going to choose from. And, and these are here. So we're on the Apply Now page here, and you can see the FAQ. That's a good link to remember on the Apply Now. Um, it's a living document. We're updating it, refining it, making it better and clearer and more distilled all the time. So use that. Um, and then here are the here are the individual categories. So you would, I'm guessing, should we have a show of hands? Like how many, I'm just, just gonna stop sharing just for a second. I'd love to know, have all of you already decided which category you're going for? Um, are you mostly, put your hands up if you are uh, going to apply for category one, which is the solo artist or groups of artists with no affiliation required. Few of you, wonderful. And then, wonderful. And then how many of you know already that you are aiming to, a, to become a partner with an agency and go for the community residency? That's category number two. Great. So you know, for those of you doing that, you know that you need to align yourself to a partner agency who will be the lead applicant. So even if you're the one writing the grant, they're the ones who are going to put their name to the application, just to make that very clear. And anyone thinking big and um, and going for category number three, that's the multi-county. Yay, Valerie, good for you. That's fabulous. I'm so proud of you. That's fabulous. Well, um, gosh, that's wonderful and ambitious, ambitious and we love that and we're here for you. Um, so I'm gonna now go back to the, um, the PowerPoint just quickly. Um, so this is where I'm going to go through very quickly the rest of it, but in such a way that you won't actually, we're not actually going to dwell on any single one of the, the slides because I'm going to come back and ask you a question. So here are a bunch of project summaries. One of the first things we ask you in any application is we're going to ask you for a 500 character count project summary. That's a short paragraph that succinctly distills and tells us what you are going to do if you are successful. And every single one 
of your project summaries, every single project summary from every single applicant must begin with support from Upstate California Creative Core. These project summaries that you're looking at are examples of project summaries that I myself have used in successful applications to the state. So I really understand about writing a project summary. I know it's both heaven and hell. It can feel like hell when you're trying to distill a vision into such a short paragraph. And yet at the end, you will feel so deeply satisfied, rather like learning a poem off by heart and carrying it with you for life. We'll also be able to use this project summary for um, to let the world know about your success. And when we are evaluated, we'll be able to share just this with uh, the state. Um, so it gives us a way of, of letting the world know about your success and your project. Um, so these are all project summaries from different grants I've written within the last five years. These are examples of timelines that I have offered in, and, and although it's fine if you want to copy, um, you know, copy, screenshot the, the page, but we'll be sharing this with you afterwards. So please don't feel that you have to. But these are all examples of the of timelines we've created. And in our applications, um, for those three categories, we'll ask you for a timeline. And um, so these are just examples. Um, this was a uh, an incredible project that we ran. This was just one year of the project that we ran um, over one state financial year um, called Belonging. Um, here's another one. This was a very large project that we ran um, called Forest Fire. We raised um, close to $400,000 for a project over about three and a half years, four years. Um, and ultimately uh, shared, and it was a completely artist-run project, absolutely extraordinary. Michael and Heather Llewellyn were the producers and creators, and, and uh, we supported them through raising the funds and promotion and partnership, coalition building, et cetera, et cetera. And this was our timeline. You can see there's a lot of, um, we've used kind of initials and acronyms a little bit in this one. And it's because we felt that we had so much to convey that we had to uh, uh, you know, be extremely cautious with our word count. Um, so we had to, you know, and also very often in, when you're doing a grant application, you don't have access to the kinds of tools we do when we're in a Microsoft Word document and we can, underline things for example there's no that you can't do that in in a in an application portal um, here's a look at some work sample the way we describe some of our work samples um, this is important when you share with us your work samples you'll see that's within an application we'll want you to describe them to us if it's not clear. So you might provide something beautiful and visual, but we won't really know what it's for. So offering notes on your work samples is often a really helpful tool to use for us because it helps the evaluation committee. This is an example of one of our work samples. Um, this was a work sample we presented um, to California Arts Council when we were looking for a particular grant following Forest Fire. And this also went into our annual report. But you can see that, that onto one single page, which then became a PDF as an upload, um, we shared, you know, there's the exhibition. There's all, there are all the didactics. Um, there are our, some of our partners. There are some of the artworks. There's an incredible hanging forest that was part of the exhibition. Um, and this is what the exhibition was. There was the why of the exhibition. So that was just one example of a work sample. Here's an example of, um, in, in our, um, you will have seen a project summary a little earlier on of um, a project that I wrote a grant for last year, um, a local impact grant it's called. And you'll see that we ask you, who are you working with? Tell us about the people that you're working with, if you are. Many of you will be working solo and applying as a solo artist, but many of you will be, um, will be uh, wanting to work with other artists. And we want to know who they are and who you are. 
Um, and if there are any, um, if there are any, um, if there are any sort of key administrative people, for example, if you're applying for grant category two or three, you will want to, um, you will want to make sure that we know about the key people in those organizations, because through that, we'll understand that you have both the competencies to support your work and your vision, and also the capacity to lend during the project. So you're not left on your own by the chief applicant. Does that make sense? Here's an example, here's another example of a work sample. Um, well, we, we love to know, you know, the lead, as a lead artist, um, what kind of work have you done in the past that makes you a compelling applicant for this project? So here, I literally created this in a work, in a, you know, a Microsoft document. I didn't have, I didn't have a, a fancy pantsy um, designer. I actually, we actually do at Nevada County Arts Council, we have the most incredible designer, Beth, but she doesn't have time to, to do all the work needed at the pace that we need it. So I have to be good at, you know, just <laughs> the jigsaw puzzle bits and pieces of creating this kind of um, support material. Um, so when you're thinking about how to present yourself in an application, think what will a review panelist looking at this get excited about? I mean, this just looks so compelling. There's so much movement. There's so much interaction between the artist and the community that that artist is sharing, right? It's very alive. There are conversations going on. Um, there's collaboration, there's partnership, there's service to a community, there are issues you can see happening. So I think, no, that's it. Okay, so here um, we have ex examples of letters of agreement. In the grant application, in our grant application, you'll see that if you apply for um, grant categories one, uh, two or three, that's if you have a lead applicant that's an agency and you as an artist are a partner with that agency, will want to see some sort of letter of agreement between you. This is a letter of agreement between us, Nevada County Arts Council, that we created between us and our two key partners for Forest Fire. That was the large um, project that I, I shared the project summary for and the work sample for. Um, and UC Berkeley's Sage Hen Creek Field Station, which as many of you know is in the um, the far east of, it's on the edges of Sierra and Nevada counties, it's extraordinary, and Truckee Donner Recreation and Park District. And in this letter, we, we outline precisely what each one of us are going to be doing, what are our responsibilities. And that lets, in this case, it was a California Arts Council grant for 150,000. And it made, we, we wanted to be absolutely sure that California Arts Council's review panelists understood the responsibilities that each one of us was taking on and all of us signed it. So I hope that's helpful. Here's another example of a, a letter of support. You'll see that in, in, our grant, um, in our grant application, we ask you to provide one or more letters, letters of support, depending on which category you apply for. This is an example of I wanted to show you this. It's not the strongest letter of support, but it's given by a profoundly respected local organization that we know fondly as TTCF, Tahoe Truckee Community Foundation. This was in 2019 at the time of our application. It's now 2023. Um, a little and uh, a little, you know, six months ago when we applied to be an administering organization for this grant that we're running now, the Creative Core, the, the Tahoe Truckee Community Foundation wrote an altogether more personal and deep, um, uh, deep um, uh, letter of recommendation for us. And it was extraordinary. And what that showed me was that our relationship with Tahoe Truckee Community Foundation had developed to the extent that the executive director threw herself into this amazing letter of recommendation, which I'll show you in a moment. But this was sufficient for the purposes of the grant at the time when we were applying for a large grant that would seed everything from California Arts Council. Um, and it also shares the relevance to Tahoe Truckee Community Foundation of 
the why of the project. They would, they're deeply interested in uh, forest management, its effect on wildfire, on forest health, on watershed health, and on the air we breathe. Um, now here's, here's the one that the same foundation wrote for us recently. You can see it's far more personal. They can, they're, they're talking about the years that they've been working with us in multiple categories, in multiple ways, both you know, through the, the years of the pandemic and through working very specifically with us on forest fire. I draw attention to this because when you're thinking about what kind of recommendations you seek, try to find an agency that's both deeply rooted in their community and understands its community and also understands the work you do and perhaps has some um, understanding of the program goal that your project is aligning to. Does that make sense? Wonderful. So here is essentially the budget that we created, the budget template that we created. Um, this is just a screenshot of an Excel file. And when you go, when you ultimately go into um, the application, you'll find the same thing exists in an online format. And it's so simple. This project is all about making sure that artists and culture bearers are paid for your work. So you're the number one people in this application. Whether it's a lead applicant in grant categories two or three who represent an agency who is the lead applicant or yourself, you're the ones we care most about because you're the ones that are going to be helping drive the vision and open up new ways of seeing and understanding one or other of the issues related to the program goals. So you're gonna put your name in there, your role, whether you're um, the lead applicant the um, as a, in grant category one or the lead artist partner, you're gonna put all the artists involved in there. Um, um, you might decide that you have six artists and only three of them have yet been found. So you'll, you'll want to say, how many artists is this going to pay? Um, I think I changed- There yeah. is a question here in the chat. Will the right. budget template be available to download in the application? Do you know, we have to check that. Gianna and I have been so unbelievably busy launching the program <laughs> that there are some fine, you might find one day that if you were to go onto the online portal, you might find that it's closed for maintenance. It's because we'll be making it more user-friendly. We won't be substantively, substantially changing anything, but we'll be making it more user-friendly. If it isn't, it should be. I think that's a wonderful question. And we're, I'm very happy to share this with you, even in Excel format, so you can use it at home or in your studio when you're applying. Um, wonderful. So you'll find that it automatically, you know, adds it up for you. Um, Really, really simple. And you understand, don't you, that 80% of the funds you receive will support you as artists. 20% will support um, the materials that you need for your project or your studio rental or rental of equipment. We can't have you purchase equipment for this. And on our website, you will see in multiple places, there's a document that we share and it's, I think it's in the FAQ as well. Um, um, but it's in, maybe uh, it could be shared, Gianna, um, in the chat. There's a, a document that we share on what this grant cannot fund. So have that handy too. And then make sure that with that in mind, only 20% going towards supplies, rentals, um, and admin costs, say, if, if it's a, an agency applying, make sure that you're asking for enough that will cover those things. Because we... We know that it's a bad habit of all of us in the creative sector to underestimate what this, what it costs to put on something that you throw your heart and soul into. And um, also another question here, Eliza, how do we record artists, subcontractors that the lead artists will choose and pay through their budget? Could you repeat that one more time? I'm sorry, Gianna. How do we record artists, subcontractors that the lead artists will choose and pay through their budget? I'm not quite sure that I understand that. I'm going to ask the, um, I'm gonna stop sharing for a moment. Let me just 
I think this is the end. I just, I'm just closing with this. I want to come back to that question. It's a funny thing when you're writing grants because you, you have to have a mindset of utter willingness to answer the questions that we ask. Otherwise you become your own worst enemy. And that's why the office hours will become, be so important to you. If you're, abs if you're not clear on what we're asking, come to those office hours and we can work through it. Um, also we're local. We are your county arts council. Pop in and see us, you know, make an appointment. Um, it's better if it's a group um, that perhaps have the same questions. Um, but seriously, we're here to support you. We want you to succeed. Um, I think this is the end of my presentation. I love this quote by George Orwell, the great enemy of clear language is insincerity. When there is a gap between one's real and one's declared aims, one turns, as it were, instinctively to long words and exhausted idioms like a cuttlefish spurting out ink. <laughs> It's strangely poetic, but also sort of very visceral, isn't it? So keep your language real. Keep it yours. You're you. We want to know you. And that's it. So I'm going to stop sharing there. And let's return to that question for just a moment. Then I want to ask the group how you'd like to spend the rest of this time. Um, who was the, the questioner? Yes. Yeah, so Hannah, are you, are you here with us? If you yeah. want to just clarify. Yeah, so as a community residency, right? Uh, if you have a lead artist and that artist wants to have assistants or subcontractors, how would that be reported in the budget? Then what you need to do, or just as a group, I would wherever possible plan for that artist to be as organized as possible by the time you submit the grant application, so that we know who that artist wants to work with. Um, there are times when we all know that I'm sure that many of us who are, are involved in grant writing regularly, you know, there are times where you write the grant, you get the grant, and then there's a change. Um, and you have to replace one artist with another. We understand that. We know that's completely understandable. But we want to know that sufficient planning by looking at your budget, for example, and by viewing where you refer to your key people, um, will get us a grasp immediately as to how much thoughtful time and engagement has already occurred with the lead artist in considering who they want to work with. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Good. And Hannah, you can, you know, you can call us anytime and as time goes by, you have another, I think it's six or seven weeks. So we left a huge application window. <laughs> so how would we like to spend this time that we have? I'm sure some of you only have another 15 minutes and others might want to linger for a little longer. Um, do we have a sense of, um, do you want to look at, how many of you attended the grant writing workshop that we held in a regional way this last week? Can you put your hands up? Great. So Patricia, you, you attended and Catherine, um, that's fabulous. And, and other Catherine and Jordan, you attended. How helpful that was and were there any gaps remaining? You can take yourselves off mute. Just let me know. You can speak. <laughs> I think the, um, the first, um, the first encounter with all of the, um, all of the requirements and, and how you do this, you know, it, it seemed to go very fast. And if you're not conversant with the vocabulary of grant writing, I, I, it was a, a bit of overwhelmed. So I appreciate having follow-up meetings because that first run was like, oh my goodness. It was almost discouraging because it was just so much. And um, so I, I, I think that, you know, sometimes that's true. When you start a new project, it can be very overwhelming until you figure it, you know, you work on it yeah. a little bit more. So that was my run. That was, that was my depressing response to it all. It's, it's so great that you say that, because of course, the reason we're doing the office hours is because we know it can be a nightmare for artists to start down this track um, yeah. without previous experience. Is there anyone in the room who does not have experience writing grants? Catherine. I write proposals. 
Great, Valerie. What sort of pro proposals do you write? So I've been writing proposals and working with 2,700 companies to pitch in front of regular investors. And most of my companies are creative companies. And so I had to spend five years trying to find the creative funds that would help with the ventures that are creative ventures that actually will lead artists into more sustainable revenue. Fabulous. Okay, so this is where I am going to my goodness, you've got your elevator pitch down, Pat. You're going to be a fabulous applicant. I'm it's just from the heart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no longer going to answer any questions from you because you just know it all already. I just know it. <laughs> I will say one of the important things about this is that this is one time um, funding. It's workforce recovery funding that comes straight down from the state, to put artists to work on issues that are critical to society. If we can create brilliant projects that we can evaluate and that you document beautifully. When I, when I say document, when you're, when you're writing your budgets, don't forget to budget in for what you need in order to document your process. So maybe you want to hire an artist who can make drawings of you at work during your process or meeting with communities that you want to serve. Or maybe that's a videographer who's gonna occasionally take pictures of you at work in your studio or out in the field. Um, maybe you document your work through poetry, whatever it is, whatever means or discipline you, you come from or want to put to use is fine. But be thinking about, say you were to be successful, and a year from now, we were going to come back and say, tell us the story of how that went for you. You'd be able to share like maybe a, like a three minute video or, um, you know, something that would completely capture hearts and minds. Guess what we would do with that? We would literally call up our senators and our assemblymen and our congressmen, and we would share it with them. We would share it with the world. We're going to harness what you do to show them that artists have real value and meaning and impact and deserve to be paid for the work that you yes, do. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Love it. Um, who else did I see who does not have grant writing? And, and there's nothing to be ashamed of. I'm actually proud that you haven't had to do this so far. <laughs> Catherine, where are you calling in from? Catherine's, and forgive me, is it Scorts? Um, you're on mute, Catherine. Yes, it's Squirtus, and my Squirtus. art name is Caterina de la Porta, because that's my maiden name. But I'm calling from Grass Valley. I have never written a grant. I already have spent like almost $700 for the project that I have in mind. Could that be part of the budget? Or... I don't know how to deal with that. Absolutely. And I think all artists, and I, I certainly know that, I mean, part of the investment of your time is that we do spend, I mean, our time is our money. Um, part of growing a small developing arts council into something of real meaning and service to our communities is that we have to invest enormous amounts of time and energy before in order to then um, draw attention to, um, you know, our worthiness as an investment um, from agencies and businesses. So um, it's unfortunately sort of part of, part of life. However, Katerina, um, when you are applying, make sure that you, make sure you ask for what you need. We probably wouldn't want you to, let us know that you're back paying yourself. That's not what this grant program is doing. Uh, so don't be naive, but just make sure that, that you budget enough that you are well compensated looking ahead. Monica, it, you it, is, it yeah. was not for me, it was for another artist. Yes. I photographed yeah. my art. Yes, absolutely. I, 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 don't think that we can say that that is covered through this grant. That's something that we hope that all artists who are now positioning themselves in a more professional sphere where they're actually at the stage where they're writing grant proposals like you are, will be naturally preparing themselves. And it doesn't feel fair, I know, but I can tell you, I'm so glad that you actually are investing in yourself in that way. It's so important 
to make sure the world sees you in the best possible light. So that when, the by, when the time comes to apply, you are able to give us materials that tell us you're serious. Monica. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, I wanted to say, um, I wrote grants long, long time ago in my country. <clears throat> I applied and I know what it takes. So that's why I was like hesitant to come back to, to a project like that after many years. Um, and so, because I, I remember that we had more time here, we have just one month while, you know, life continues with all of the things. My question is like, um, uh, in my case, it's been like a while that I'm not uh, um, active as an artist in the community. I am an educator. I was a designer for many years, but then in this thing, you know, you need to prove, put put work proof of like your piece of work in the recent years. I don't have even. I barely go to Facebook. I don't have a an Instagram account and all that. And it, today is all like that. So I know that I can, I have a, a piece of work for the project that I was already, do, I'm already doing and I can do a lot of things, but my concern is the timing. You know, I need to just, I, I need to find, create a page, create something that will show um, why I'm calling myself an interactive artist with a lot of history in the past as a dancer, theater, musician, and I'm now working with kids, but it takes all time. And also with the budget thing, it takes time to you know just put pull together the uh, the 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 team to see how they want to work, what are the things. So this is really my my real concern. You also suggested that if we could do work with an organization, and I'm thinking of that organization already. And to do that, I need to create first to write really my plan and my grant first, which I'm doing it, to show them to them first in order to see if that if I could apply with them or as an individual artist. So my concern is the timing, really. So it feels like overwhelming in all these aspects. So I just want to have a feedback from you that has, you have so much, don't so much. <laughs> Thank this. you. Thank you, Monica. I completely get where you're coming from. Um, one of the things that we haven't done that many funding sources and grant makers insist upon is, is insist upon the artist having a website because we recognize that there are many different ways of sharing with the world what we do. And so we haven't insisted. We'd love it. It would make it much easier for us if all artists did have a website because then you can just go on and see at a glance even if it's a landing page i my recommendation would be perhaps to come to to come nowadays it's incredibly easy to put together a beautiful landing page that in a at a glance someone can tell you wow and maybe it's a collage of past work um but just having that that presence um kind of shares a story that you mean business so my recommendation is either create a landing page. Um, I could connect you with um, a, a number of people who, who could you know, quote you on creating a very simple landing page. Or maybe there's someone in this group who could volunteer to help you create a landing page. Oh, Valerie. OK, yes, Valerie. that's amazing. Valerie and Monica, can I ask you to share contact details mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. via the chat? That would be fabulous. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And keep this simple, Monica. Don't overthink it. Um, if you have an Instagram account already, for example, but perhaps it's not updated with your most recent work, maybe for the next few weeks, make sure that you post, you make posts that are relevant to the art which you are positioning yourself to create or receive funding for. I can help you with that. It's overwhelming. We have a special system that uh, reduces the overwhelm for someone who has not done that before, and we put it up as a grid. It's very easy. It's very simple. And I probably shouldn't say this, but we can actually do it in less than a, a half a day. So um, it's very easy. And it's in that way, it's not overwhelming for the artists. Fantastic. Monica, 
use the website. We've literally created an entire website for this, which is also, you know, becoming more refined and defined. Um, um, as the days pass, sorry, I was just getting a call from a colleague who should know that I'm in a grant workshop. <laughs> um, um, but yes, keep it simple, just read. Uh, just read, we've, we've tried to keep language very clear, read the background, get into it, um, and you're gonna be fine. Also know there's a mathematical component to this. Um, prob most likely, the smaller the amount that you ask for, the less competitive it's going to be, right? Mm -hmm. So, so in, instead of perhaps beginning with this um, sense of um, confidence that you need to grow, perhaps start with um, a smaller project that you can find your feet in over time that won't overwhelm you from the very beginning. I hope that makes sense. Um, Jordan. Thank you. Oh, hand. Where's the hand? Yeah. Hi. Um, I have a very basic question. It goes back to a couple of things that were said in previous sessions about <clears throat> adequate compensation for artists. Uh, and then today in the budget, you know, for a very long time, my work has sort of been by the piece, you know, in books, it's whatever my agent can get out of the publisher in magazines. It's just a, a deal between me and the editor. Mm -hmm. I'm not used to working on hourly or even estimating hourly, except when I'm, I'm I actually have a sideline of helping writers uh, oftentimes write their first books for, for, um, you know, publication in the big world. I, I'm just not used to, I don't know what, what, what adequate compensation would be. How do you, uh, how do you come up with that? Let's just let's just go back and look at that budget. I just want to point something out to you. Um, you see here where it says rate of pay per year, per month, per hour, or per service. What you're used to, Jordan, is per service. So if, if that's what you're used to and you know your worth, put that solid amount in there. You don't have to break it down by the hour. Does that make sense? Or yeah, I noticed that actually. In, uh, mm -hmm. Am I still on or am I muted? Yes. Yeah. I noticed that uh, actually in in one of your examples, uh, it just sort of had flat fees for, I guess, for Daniela Fernandez or somebody. And it was just a, a round number. I think it was the number was four thousand. It, was, it wasn't broken down that I could see. Is that what you're talking about? I'm very glad you mentioned this. Um, what we ask you within the application is to share with us, so you can put the flat fee, it's not broken down at all. And that's because the narrative elements of the, the project application will make it clear the value of what it is that you ultimately see in the budget. Mm -hmm. So between the budget, you know how they say, you know, it's data plus story, story plus data. Um, we're looking at the qualitative and the quantitative within an application. So when we look at the budget and we see that Jordan has put in $400,000 to create a written piece that's 400 words long, we would think that's probably a little bit over the top for what he's proposing. But if you in your um, project description had described adequately um, what you would be doing for the amount that we then see as a number in that right. field, it's going to make perfect sense to us. So don't worry. Similarly, with a visual artist, it's there are fairly standard amounts that you and your areas in the areas that you serve um, would expect to be paid for a mural, for example, on the side of a building. It's fine mm -hmm. to put that total sum there. Um, we do like to know what each individual artist stands to make for this. So it probably would be helpful for those of you thinking of working in groups to break down so that we can see everyone's going to be more or less fairly compensated in whatever way you describe as fair. Does that make sense? Jordan, does yeah. that help you? Yeah, that, that's very helpful. Thank you. Perfect. Maggie? Um, yeah, yeah, that's always the, there's always a challenge, Jordan, figuring out, you know, what to charge for anything or a gig or this or that. But um, it's a good process to go through 
And uh, I was always grateful. I ran into, you know, the beginning of this century to Utah Phillips one day who we were having a chat. He's a, you know, was a really famous, wonderful folk singer um, who lived in our community here in Nevada City for many years. And he said something like, Maggie, you've got the art of music down. Now you have to do the business. And I just went, really, really, you know, like I didn't have a web page yet or anything. So I took it to heart. And at least a couple of days a week, I put on my business hat. And uh, usually on Monday and Tuesdays and try to do that. And then the rest of the week, I attempt to just be an artist and, and create. But uh, it's a good thing to get into once you get over that hump of, ah. Um, a question I have. Oh, first, oh, Joanne Hild, I would love to talk to you. I need a scientist. So <laughs> look in the private chat. I put my phone number. Fabulous. Yes. This, is, this is why this is gold dust, isn't it, that you know, we're meeting today. I, I love the idea that partnerships would form just by you all seeing each other. And this is why we didn't want to hold it as a webinar. Webinars right. look so much more professional, but all you can see is me and my colleagues. And it's so boring. We want to see all of you. We want all of you to see each other. Right. I need a filmmaker, too. If, um, but I need to in the room. So, so, you know, going from you know, having absolutely nothing together really much in the business, you know, of music to having everything now. What, can anybody explain what they think the difference is between social media lands? What, what is the difference between Instagram and Facebook? I mean, you know, it seems like there's this, this, I mean, of course, they're both, you know, owned by the I, same. I can company. speak to that. I thought Valerie might be able to <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I, Instagram is uh, basically set up if it's it started out as more images, right? Yes. And you said Instagram and Facebook? Yes. Okay, so Facebook is trending in the video. So it, you, I just heard you say something about a producing a film. So if you want to go in that direction, I would suggest you go into Facebook because Facebook is trending actually faster than YouTube in terms of recognition. So you may not get as much from your Instagram as you will from your Facebook uh, in the in the in the real department right. it's called Facebook real so um Facebook yeah. is really leading and it sounds like you're going that direction so right. I don't know I'm not I haven't worked with you I just listen really quickly yeah no I I wondered sort of what the the general it seems like some people uh, think that Instagram is 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 kind of trendier is the more it's, oh, the, right. it's, it's the newer of those ones and that it's somehow um in a class above if you're trying to get the trendy see the way you have to use the um the medias is understand that they all aren't equal like remember we had radio television and mm -hmm. and then billboards we didn't expect the billboard to do what a television set does and we don't expect radio to do what television does yeah, so it has that. their particular area and so that's the way we need to understand about social media social media each one has their area that can contribute to you but if you're not really familiar with it you get overwhelmed by all the stuff and so I say, keep it simple, okay? And I find out exactly what your focus is so you're not spreading yourself, trying to manage all the social media when you really want to focus on your art. Yeah. yeah that one has Valerie, to Maggie, go. I might just interrupt you for a moment because I'm seeing so many questions. But I'm done. I, I'm done. Valor, Valerie, um, mm -hmm. I'm hoping, Gianna, that we have Valerie's um, contact information because it might be quite fun for us to um, pull Valerie in to actually lead a session that might help our local artists and even our regional artists. I'd Thank be happy to do that. And I'd be happy to do that complimentary. I work with the VCs and I sit on the panels. I'm very happy to do this. I started out in Siskiyou County doing this years ago when they brought me out to try and bring together the rural area. I'm very dedicated to what you're doing. Wonderful, Valerie. Okay, Gianna, um, do we have Valerie's contact information? We love it. Okay, you're in such trouble now. Um, Patricia, you've got your hand raised. Oh, Gianna, do you, were you just, about, sorry, Patricia, I'm all over the place. Gianna, did you have something you wanted, you needed me to know? Um, there are just some questions in the chat, so we can have Patricia ask her questions. Yeah, let's have, next. Nice. Patricia, um, fire away. Yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much for having this. Um, every one of these is so useful. Um, I'm just curious about in the application process and thinking about one's art and then one's administration as an applicant who has a little bit of both, how do I reflect that engagement of my skills in the application budget? 
Yes. Mm-hmm. So first of all, I hope, and part of the Arts Council's role, so sorry to take just a tiny step back from that, just to, for context, part of Nevada County Arts Council's role um, generally in a local regional way is to nurture our artist community and our, our culture bearers in such a way that over time, all of you develop these kind of professional administrative skills. It's no um, coincidence that artist, uh, you know, artistic directors of theater companies all over the world are now um, so closely aligned to what an executive director has traditionally done. Um, all of us have to be real in this world to walk this path together. It's very, very uncomfortable. Um, so I'm very, I'm glad for you that you have these skills. Make sure that the time and energy you give as an artist to your process is compensated. Whether that is within the 20% that is um, um, for, you know, admin, supplies, rentals, whatever, but make sure that you are compensated. We have not been prescriptive in terms of, this is what we mean with by fair pay. Fair pay, pay. Partly this is because um, depending on where you live, the cost of living may be higher or lower. Mm-hmm. One of our board members who's incredible, she's director of development at the Mark Morris Group and is on several boards of directors in the New York and East Coast region, um, gave me this unbelievable tool which broke down exactly how much an artist in New York could expect to make um, by curating an exhibition in a small gallery versus a large gallery how much an, a, a literary artist could hope to make from a, a journalistic piece, an op-ed, or, and how much um, a, a speaker fee might be for a poet, et cetera, et cetera. And when we looked at the numbers, we realized that it, 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 they, they simply weren't tenable for rural California, and that we would actually put off applicants from applying, and that we didn't have enough money to go around. We very much want to sort of share the love and spread the love and and make sure that there's equitable funding in every county. And we want you to make compelling applications and we do not want you to short circuit yourself by not asking for enough money. So um, we can have a conversation about this too, Patricia, because I'll be coming up to Truckee to lead one of these sorts of workshops. And so think about what I've said and then come back with more questions. Gianna, what are we saying in the chat? Yes, so there's a question here. How do you want us to cite research within the application, such as HPI and other resources? It's really simple, actually. Um, we ask you, we, we ask you, and I, I've kind of att- intentionally not delved deeply today into the Healthy Places Index. Who hasn't heard of the California Healthy Places Index? Lisa, you have not yet heard, and Alice, you have not yet heard. I'm just gonna share my screen just very briefly. Um, Yeah, and maybe that can also lead to another question that we had um, in terms of, projects, should our projects have an outreach to other counties component? So maybe that, you know, you can answer that question as well within showing the Healthy Places Index. Right. So the state, California Arts Council, has given us a tool that's being adopted across California by government agencies, social service agencies, um, you know, municipal departments, um, you name it as a way to measure the relative health of communities across the state. What you see on on the screen now is the metaphorical health of Northern California. Where you see very dark green areas, that's telling us that those communities are relatively healthful in relation to other communities across California, where you see that they're slightly less 
dark green, they're pale green, they're slightly less healthy, but still in the upper quartiles of the Healthy Places Index. Where you see the pale blue, those communities are, are beginning to have issues. When you, where you see the very dark blue areas, those communities really need focus. If I were to go onto the Healthy Places Index now by following that link, and you can do this later, you can home in on where you find Nevada County. Mm. We've provided this map here because when you go into the map, there isn't that automatic county, county border, county line overlay. So we asked our graphic designer just to provide that for us so you can find that. You'll see that in Nevada County, for example, there are, it's pretty much the whole thing is pale blue, which means that there are some underlying issues. And if you were to go into the Healthy Places Index, you would find, you would pretty soon, um, just by clicking on those pale blue areas, even the pale green areas, you would click on them and find something that was going on that you could perhaps allude to in your application. And I'm not going to go deeply into it now, but if you go to, I'm going to share with you now the look and listen page of our website. Um, see this link here? Look and listen. This is where we put all the trainings, workshops, and panels that we've already held. All these have been held literally within the last sort of nine days or last, I think last week, it's, it's all from the last week. So you can see we've held one grant writing workshop already. We've had, um, we've led a, a session on for specifically for government and social service agencies who are hoping to apply as lead applicants. Um, we also have a PowerPoint that we can share with you um, about that. We have the informational um, webinar and we also have a really interesting um, session that we led with um, someone called David Kippen, who's the um, former chair of literature at the National Endowment for the Arts and an authority on a program that was launched during the 20th century that so inspired the upstate California Creative Corps. So that all that's really great material. And I believe we still, and here's the Healthy Places training. Great, this is what I wanted to share with you. For those of you who want to understand how to put this, this map to work, the Healthy Places Index map to work for you, in order for you to reference it in the most simple way, we're not asking for in-depth metrics at all. We simply want you to look at it and just be aware of what's going on in the community that you're saying you want to serve. We also recognize, there's a big disclaimer here, we recognize that some of the metrics that go into the Healthy Places Index seem to work better. And we fed this back to the Public Health Alliance of California who created this map, seem to work better for urban, more dense spaces. Um, and we've given, we've even written a paper on it and issued it. So this is why we say that this, we recognize that the Healthy Places Index offers just one method of measuring the relative health of communities. There are other studies that are done locally that, for instance, the county government might do on an annual basis that you can um, look into and you'll learn more if you listen to that video. Um, and also, you know, we, we totally honor the lived experience of community members locally. And so um, let me just stop sharing. And how yeah, I then Eliza, the question was how to cite these sources within yeah. the application. Could you stop me from sharing because the, the thing is over it and I can't reach the button. <laughs> oh, I, I'm i not able to do that because- oh. oh, here we go, stop share, great. I want to see you all again, super. Well, <clears throat> um, I'm gonna ask, I, I'm going to, we don't need you. So just to answer that, go, go back to that question. We don't need you to answer in detail. What we might expect is, the more money you ask for, the greater your ambitions. We might expect a little bit more thorough research. If you're a solo artist, um, which I'm suspecting, Monica, you might want to apply as a solo artist. Um, 
um, the, or, or anyone applying for a solo artist or as a small group of artists, we probably won't ask for such in-depth citations, for example. So just go easy on yourself and talk to us. Um, maybe put off pressing the submit button on your application until you've attended a few office hours where you can ask us, you know, as your ideas develop, um, you can ask us those questions. Um, I, yeah. Joanne, and, yeah. There's also another question here. And also individual artists, um, they don't have to be just one individual. So in the first category, you can apply, you, you have a lead applicant artist, but you could be working with other artists. So there's only one applicant and you, so you could still apply as a small group of artists or cultural bearers for grant category one, just to make that clear. And then there's another question. How would you recommend the artists network in a very short time who may have similar interests or skills to offer? Have right. artists and organizations been successful connecting on projects through Nevada County Arts Council web portals, Facebook? Wonderful. Would you please put in um, the chat, Gianna, um, our Facebook group called Conversation Cafe. We've created a Facebook group called the Conversation Cafe specifically for this grant program so that all of you can share beyond this, beyond today's session. We also encourage you to attend um, next Thursday evening at, is it five o'clock, 5.30, Gianna? We're going to be at the Nail Factory. Everyone know where the Nail Factory is? Yep. Such a cool space. Do you want to put the address of Miles's thing in there? And perhaps the Facebook link to that Facebook event. Um, and that will be in person at the Nail Factory. It's on North Bloomfield Road in Nevada City. And um, okay. specifically we'll be in the studio of Miles Tolan. Toland. It's a wonderful space with a lot of artists. And we'll be there, um, you know, uh, it's a networking opportunity. We host these every single month. We host meetups. Um, uh, if we can ever get up to Truckee because of the weather, we'll be doing more up there as well. Um, I'm certainly intending to go up within the next couple of weeks to meet with artists at Truckee Artists Lofts. Um, but we invite all artists to attend the one, the one that we'll be holding on um, Thursday this coming week. And you'll be able to see each other and meet each other in person, plus meet others. But mm -hmm. use the Conversation Cafe. Is that there? I was checking. Perfect. Great. We also have a Facebook page specifically for the cafe. And we've just created an Instagram account this week. So um, please tag us. Can we possibly put the tags that we'd all like you to stay connected with us into the chat Gianna do you have those from maybe grab them from the conversation cafe it might be quite helpful but if not you can see how we're tagging um wonderful but anyway come to the come to the office hours um and and ask your question I'm just reading Patricia's email <laughs> Sweet. Um, Patricia I'll get back to you about that mm. I, I'm not sure because by the time if we get to the next weekend it's going to be I'm very aware that we won't have um, enough time for for other artists to you know so well let's talk Andra mm -hmm. you're muted Okay. Okay, here we go. This is my first grant writing. And I don't understand my win, W I N, besides the money, besides the altruism factor, besides. CV optics. What's my win? What's I don't I don't know. What's my win? It's a it's a lot of work. My brain space is like wow, being invaded by this, and I don't have, you know, I can't create my stuff. 
it seems, you know, so far, maybe I'll get into a group, but it takes from studio time. What's my win? I don't know. Andra, there may not be, this may not be the grant for you. It isn't, it, it, all grants do not suit all artists. Mm -hmm. If, if you were to ponder, if you were to print out from the website, those program goals, um, and you were to stick them on the fridge door or on your studio shelf, and you were to live with them for a couple of days or a week, and suddenly something were to occur to you that had meaning for you, maybe the win would start to appear. But I cannot answer that question. All okay. I know is... Let me, let me say that I want to do public health uh, focus. And I, am a, I was a public health major in college. So I think it is the grant for me, but I don't know. I just thought maybe there, someone mentioned to me, it's esteemable and I, to be granted something like this. I thought maybe, I don't know, you might have something else. It's kind of uh, nebulous and intangible and, uh, kind of thing, but I don't know. I just thought maybe. I know this is a pilot program. A lot has been thrown by legislators into the language around this grant. It's, it's interesting. On the one hand, it's almost esoteric, this grant. On the other hand, it's, on the other hand, we've having completed a listening tour of 19 counties and met with um, many different communities, we've listened and made our process very simple. So although we've been given some opportunity from the state, um, which is incredibly complicated, we're trying to make it as simple as possible for you. And I can only say, keep it simple, keep those program goals close, develop that public health lens see if it works for you don't get bogged down um use simple language and just see come back to us in an office hour just see how it goes okay the the am i the is the grant to help help the peripheral community or maybe it's and or or is the grant to bring awareness to the community of the existence of the peripheral community. That is a bit esoteric for me. So, but here, I'm gonna read something to you. I'm gonna read something to you. It's the background, it's on the background page. It says the California Creative Core Program follows an unprecedented period in which communities globally have suffered as the result of the COVID-19 pandemic. During these years, Creative sector professionals across the US have been proposing way to employ and deploy artists in programs similar to the Works Progress Administration, that's the WPA that we were referring to, and the Comprehensive Employment Training Act. One was under Roosevelt, the other was post Nixon. The launch of a statewide Creative Core pilot program is the result of a recommendation from the Governor's Economic and Jobs Recovery da Task Force and is the first of its kind in the nation. $60 million from the 2021-22 state budget has been invested in the California Arts Council to create a program through which administering organizations appointed through a competitive process are responsible for re-granting monies across their service areas or regions. Nevada County Arts Council has been selected to serve the upstate region, responsible for distributing close to three and a half million in grant funding across 19 counties. I share that with you because the intent of it is so deep. It, you know, it, it comes from an idea that was created on the heels of the Great Depression that was picked up again, um, you know, um, post Nixon era, era um, as a way to fuel posit positivity and regain public trust during difficult times. Um, you're creating, as an artist, you're creating awareness for issues that are critical to society. Um, 
Keep it simple, Andra. And if it doesn't fit, don't worry because there are many other grant application, grant opportunities that are just about to open at the level of the state. California Arts Council, our state agency, um, is right now voting on guidelines for programs that are in many ways much more simple. There's a particular grant called um, impact projects where you can choose something you want to do in a much more simple way, but some similarly aligned to this, where you're not having to cite which, um, you know, healthy places index, um, you know, um, census track you're going to be serving and all that sort of thing. So look out for that. And if you stay close to Nevada County Arts Council, we'll be running grant workshops to let you know what those opportunities are as time goes by probably within the month we'll have another session like this not on grant writing but on what are the state opportunities coming down your way we do i not think it's the grant for me i'm sorry but i do <laughs> think it is good but my brain is like i know I know. I know i know keep it thank simple you. okay <laughs> thank you so much sahara um you're muted Hi, um, I'm actually really happy that you're coming to Nail Factory because I have a studio here as we speak right now. Um, we snowed in almost like four feet of snow, but it looks beautiful and I love the energy here. I'm, I'm friends with Miles and I'll be there. So that's that's very good news. <laughs> Bahara, I'm so, I'm so grateful that you've let us know that. Will you let all the other artists at the Nail Factory know we, we are... Um, we're really looking forward to being with you. If you could help spread the word, that would be super. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I actually did the event here first when I got a studio here to bring the community together. So I'm, I'm a little bit connected, you know? So for sure, I will do that. Uh, my question was, um, I wrote this grant for awareness, global awareness for current genocide and uh, women life freedom in Iran, as well as all the women abroad that are going on, uh, undergoing oppression. And um, all of a sudden, a friend of us told me about Nevada County Council. And I was like, oh my God, what a coincidence. This is amazing. So if I could merge this with, you know, the guideline of, of your submission um, and the Nevada County mm. submission. So now I'm merging these two together and I'm very pleased with the result that I have so far. It's my first time I'm writing grants, but mm. uh, I spent almost two months to just, you know, get it to the, to the point that I wanted. Uh, my question is, I'll be working with uh, various artists uh, as well as performers, um, videographers, and might have agencies that they want to sponsor as well. So would I consider category three, just to make sure that I'm on the right track? So um, any artist in any discipline can apply and in our guidelines, and in fact, in multiple places on the, this is why it's so important that all of you familiarize yourself with the website, because literally all your, all your um, questions are answered. I'm just gonna open up the English version of the guidelines and just share it for a okay. second, um, just to show you so you can be familiar. And there are, we, we, all, we will also, we stand at the ready to, to present these guidelines in any language. Um, but there's a definition of artist here. Mm, wow. okay. um, we define what an artist is. And there you see in the guidelines, you can see again, we make it very clear. So you, you dwell on that, Sahara. Okay. Um, we define an artist, culture bearer or culture maker as a human being who regularly engages in artistic and cultural practice to express themselves with the intention of communicating richly or to sharing with others, pass on traditional knowledge or cultural practices, offer cultural resources to their communities and, to, and or co-organize and co-create within communities towards social impacts. Mm -hmm. Artists aspire to sustain themselves through their practice and maintain a commitment to continuing their practice. Mm -hmm. Artists can work both individually and collaboratively or as educators within their field. Mm -hmm. I'm also now just going to really quickly take you up to um, the um, an application. I just want you to see an application, what it looks like. Let's go into yeah. this. I, 
I filled it up halfway, but I was I was unsure to be honest with you, um, which category that I'm falling in to. I see. I see. You mean one looking at this, which of these categories? Mm -hmm. So it would be a combination of visual art, sound design, 3D design, photo, sculpture. I mean, it, it's perfect. It's, yeah, it's um, perfect. Uh, music and performance art. Sahara, this is great. So what you'd probably do is it you see how it says select as many as apply. So mm -hmm. select as many as apply. We don't force you into a we don't buttonhole you at all. And then maybe you're a bit of social practice arts and an art medium that focuses on engagement through human interaction and social discourse. Absolutely. Maybe there's another kind of creative process that you want us to know about, about you. You let us know. The last thing I want to do is just really quickly share another, another um, definition. Mm -hmm. This week, um, maybe Gianna, you would like to, um, maybe you could describe what we, the, our, our extraordinary experience in, in Williams in Calusa County this week. Yeah, so we held, um, I think a lot of you know that we've done a listening tour uh, across the 19 counties of upstate. And we just held our last listening session in Williams in the county of Colusa, which has like a really high population of Latinx community. But we were very surprised to um, have an artist there who's a basket weaver and she's from one of the tribes locally, the Wintu tribe. And you know, we we arrived at the the point that we're presenting the grant and the different grant categories. And mm -hmm. one of the people in the room said to her, you know, oh, you would apply, you could apply, you're an artist. And she she was surprised by that, you know, and we and then Eliza presented, you know, the same presentation here and she showed her the definite what defines an artist. Mm -hmm. And then we went into what defines a culture bearer. And mm -hmm. as Eliza was reading this out loud, she just was in tears. And then she put everyone in tears in the room because she had no idea that she would she was seen that way and that mm -hmm. what what meaning it had of what she was doing, you know, mm -hmm. because she simply just does it as part yep. of her culture and her tradition. Absolutely. And you know, so it was very, very inspiring. And we realized this is the reason why we're doing this too, you know. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And I really want to be involved with you guys for the future as well, because, you know, I moved here almost a year ago and I'm very excited to start doing community events and create, continue create awareness um, in, inside uh, of California state as well as, as other states. Um, my my second question, if I may, was: um, Are we allowed to use this grant in different platforms? Sahara, you will need to explain what you mean by that. Mm -hmm. Because originally, when I wrote, wrote this grant, I was gonna—I didn't know you guys existed, so I was gonna go on either GoFundMe or Indiegogo or such platform or Patreon. And then when I came across you guys, I was like, okay, that's actually could be a better opportunity and more aligned with what I'm doing and my mission. So that's why I, I want to like clear that out and make sure that once I submit with you guys, uh, would it be just that or can I use a different um, application for a different um, funding, like with different platforms? I'm, I'm, it's, it's, do, do you mean that if you were to receive the funding, but then you changed your mind? I'm being really stupid here. Gianna, do you want to jump in? Yeah, I think, Sahara, um, so you can apply to different grants. Mm -hmm. uh, even within Creative Core, there's other administering organizations. For mm -hmm. instance, I think there's about three that are covering the, the entire state. Mm -hmm. For instance, in that case, you could apply both with the upstate creative core and another organization that's covering the entirety of the state. Should you be selected for both grants, you would have to choose um, which one you would work with. Um, mm -hmm. if you're trying to raise funds through platforms such as GoFundMe, um, 
or or different ways that you're you're mm -hmm. you know trying to raise funds. I mean, if you receive the funds from us, then there's no need to go into these platforms. Exactly. And and the thing too is that you won't be charging. You know, so once you if you're a grantee and you receive the funds, um, you will you wouldn't be charging. For instance, if you're putting up an event. You know, it it will it won't be like a paid event, or you won't be asking mm -hmm. for funds outside. You know, the grant, um, just the grant the, area. Yeah, the scope of work. Yes, we we would expect you to use the funds in exactly the way that you've said you will use them mm -hmm. in your in your timeline within the grant activity period. So the grant activity period runs from May, um, late May through to um, late May 2024, you do not have to have a project that lasts an entire year. Mm -hmm. You could have a project that lasts three months or six months or nine months. That's completely up to you, but you do need to spend the money as you said you would and, and be prepared to sort of report on it at the end. And mm -hmm. that's why documenting your creative process is so important. Mm -hmm. um, Gianna mentioned, and sorry, I, I zoned out there because I was I was writing um, a couple of um, messages to people who had uh, directly messaged me in the chat. Um, Gianna, thank you, but you described that beautifully. Um, thank you. Sahara, see how these, this is the map of California, yeah? Uh -huh. Each one of these regions has an agency like ours or more that are administering this, another a, another bunch of funds for that particular mm -hmm. area. Uh -huh. And um, you can find, we can share who those agencies are and the same, more or less the same criteria, eligibility criteria for you will exist. In all cases, they will ask you, do you live in, work in or serve the community that you are proposing to align your project to. So if, for example, you want to apply to another agency, uh, they will ask you, what, why here? You know, do you already have mm -hmm. some pre-existing relationship with a community in San Diego or Los Angeles mm -hmm. or the Bay Area? So you'll uh -huh. need to answer that question. And if you are eligible, great, apply for both, apply to all, but you'll only be able to, in terms of the entire state, You'll have to, if you're successful for more than one, as Gianna said, you'll have to choose one. Okay, thank you so much. But I can, uh, there's no limitation that I cannot. I can apply maybe on two or three platforms within uh, the criteria here. Um, when you say platforms, I think you mean other administering agencies, exactly, yeah? Exactly, exactly. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, yes. And but just and know that we're all in touch with each other and the California Arts Council, who are overviewing the entirety of the California Creative Corps across the entire state, are ultimately going to be creating a way for us to all keep track on successful applicants in each other's regions. Does that make sense? Yes, Yes. Um, which is great. Um, mm -hmm. So we're all in touch. We're all benchmarking. We're all um, borrowing from one another, being generous with each other and helping each other succeed. We really want this to work so that the funding continues so that it's so unusual for artists to be able to make direct applications for state funding. Right. This is mm -hmm. very unusual. Um, it only began to happen in COVID during the COVID years mm -hmm. with California Arts Council. It's actually amazing. We are so yeah. lucky. Yeah. So it's yeah. just of us being, let's let's like dive into the unknown a bit here. <laughs> and then there's Thank a question so here, Eliza. Um, do projects need to be 100% funded by Creative Core? No. Can a project rely on multiple funding sources. And I thought that would be good for you to respond because it might help other folks too. Mm -hmm. I love that question. No, they don't have to be 100% funded by Creative Core. But what we do ask is for you to present a very distinct thing that, should you be successful, our funding will support because you're going to need to report on something very distinct within that other larger picture. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So an example is when we applied for funding, seed funding from California Arts Council three years ago, four years ago, for the big project that we um, told you about called Forest Fire. Um, 
we, we wrote a grant for 150 and actually they required that we go out and find at least double that to match it. And mm -hmm. Troy, I'm looking at you, you know the whole story of Forest Fire up in Truckee. It was a, an amazing project. So we were constantly, <laughs> we were constantly um, raising money, um, but each funder that funded us wanted to know well, what precisely is my money going to fund within that bigger picture? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So think of something distinct that and, and kind of visceral that we will understand and you describe it beautifully and we'll get it. George and then also, um, sorry, mm -hmm. um, how would applying artists compensate participating agencies and organizations? So again, that falls into, you know, the what we describe in the guidelines that 80% goes to paying the artists, 20% goes to materials and administrative costs. Yeah. So I hope that's clear now. And then just another question, can an artist or organization apply to more than one category with different projects? Oh my goodness. I'm You've, you've completely caught me on that one. I can't remember what we said in our guidelines or our FAQ can we come back to you on that Gianna can you remember who from it is Troy that? actually it's um, from Troy yeah um, I think I think you can only apply for one category but you can be a participating audience um, artist in another category as long as you're not the lead applicant I think I've got that right haven't I yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah exactly so otherwise it would be mean wouldn't it because you know, I'm. I, you're such an experienced artist, and you know, um, an administrator in the arts as well, Troy, especially in public art. And um, so, it's it's no wonder that you would be asking a question like that. You want to keep your options open. So just go cautiously, and and also attend an office hour and bring some examples of what that might look like for you. Um, can I just add, um, so the Capital Creative Core, so our neighboring partners that are administering the grants and the uh, mid part mid state did say, and I don't know if it's still true, but they did say that artists and organizations apply to multiple tiers um, through separate applications as long as they're not overlapping or 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 duplicates. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, I would say the same applies, and that's um, that's the um, Sacramento um, Arts and Culture Commission, isn't it? Yes, we've been working closely with Melissa, doing all sorts of benchmarking. Um, trying to think how our program differs slightly from, from that um, Capital Region, California Creative Core. Um, they have a fabulous program where they, because they are a city agency, they're a municipality, essentially, the Sacramento Office of Arts and Culture. They've been able to line up paid positions within city government for artists, which is fabulous. We'd love to do that. We seriously in, in, encourage um, anyone who has connections in their city or town, local government or county government to use those connections because a government agency can apply to put you to work. You get paid through this. It's the most innovative thing. And, and again, this stems back to the lineage of the WPA and the CETA programs post Nixon, where um, the idea being that there's a certain um, degree to which local government, despite its access to its constituents, hasn't yet found a way to properly engage communities right. issues in a compelling way. Mm -hmm. And so we strongly encourage alignment with government agencies and government agencies themselves want it. And we're here to help forge those partnerships if you have ideas. It was also I'll say it was interesting that they did discourage artists thinking about inner city projects in really uh, encourage them to go out into some of the more underserved communities and rural area areas. And so that's an area where it looks like the upstate creative core really has a leg up um, just because there's so many rural areas that it's addressing. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's 
you know, I have to say, doing our listening tour around upstate California, it was a very leveling experience and a very beautiful experience as well. We came, we we experienced such resiliency and such, um, you know, um, amazing allyship um, between peoples and communities. It was extraordinary. But we also um, encountered deep, deep scarcity and lack of resources. And that's why you're seeing on the Healthy Places Index, those blue areas, and whether they're pale blue or dark blue, and that's where we encourage you to just dive in and see what those things are, and then listen to that HPI thing. Whereas Troy, if you look at the, you know, I, I'll just, it, it's, it's very clear, I'll just share the screen one more time, looking at that map. Um, uh, you, you can see here, um, the I-80 corridor that runs all the way from the Bay Area up into Placer County through Sacramento, Roseville, et cetera, all along that interstate highway, you see you know, there are access to hospitals, education, um, retail, um, so many resources that lend themselves to overall health outcomes for communities. Whereas in the North, we don't quite have that. And it's not necessarily a parallel thing. We, mm -hmm. yeah, we are happy in Nevada County because we don't, we don't want big shopping malls. That's not a measure of community health for us. Mm -hmm. But um, so that's why again we ask you to share lived experience and other other ways of thinking. But um, yes, Troy, I think that's why Sacramento, the capital region, is pushing pushing out into those rural areas. Could, could I ask you a question? Yes, please. It's sort of pertinent to what we've been talking about. Maybe I'm missing something, but could you outline in the briefest way the categories or subsets within this idea of uh, that, that my understanding is that it's possible to file more than one grant application for a separate project? My, I, I think I'm hearing that you can only do that out of your region. Or, or, or can you do that within your region? We are not encourage, encouraging multiple applications to different categories among those three categories within the- No, no, not different categories. Let's say all, all category one in my case would be. Uh, you, you, so you, what you'll find, Jordan, if you were to, um, Gianna, I wonder if you, while I'm, I'm answering Jordan, can you pull up California Arts Council Google California Arts Council um, Creative Core and find the list of other administering agencies for other regions, because I think it would be useful to share that page on a, and that link actually in the chat um, so that um, all our artists know where, if they have affiliations and they have existing relationships with vulnerable communities, for example, in other parts of the state, they will know who to go to to make applications for funding from those ultimately you will have to choose which if you're successful and you make more than one application which you can do you'll have to choose which one to say i accept from does that answer would that be though within a region or only at, uh, in separate regions am i making uh, within the california core so the California Creative Core is a statewide program that's divided up regionally with different administering organizations, but it's the same overall pot of money. It's $60 million for the Got whole it. state. And, and this is why the state wants to keep track on who's accepting money from which regional administrator. Does that make sense? Okay. I think my okay. question is, is it possible to file, as I understood, I, I, several times I've heard you say something like, but if you end up getting both, you'll have to choose one. So my sense is that we've mentioned a few times the idea of more than one application, but within what constrictions or bounds do that have to take place? For example, can you only file one application within a region of like yes. ours? Yes. And, but you could file a second one in a different region. Is that yes, right? Yes, exactly. Okay, that, that was only my question. Thanks yeah. so much. Jordan, you can only file one application for the upstate region where you are now. You Got can it. file yeah. another one somewhere else and another one somewhere else. And you'll have to choose. However, 
you could be, so you can only be the lead applicant for one application within this region. However, you could find yourself being an artist in another application within this region, but you're not the lead applicant. Very helpful, thank you. Great. Well, friends, thank it, you. It, of course, it's been it's been delightful, and it's been a long time. We've been we've been talking together for now for almost two hours. I I can't believe your stamina. <laughs> <laughs> what a pleasure. Well, um, Gianna, would you mind putting our email address in the chat finally, and then um, scoop it up. It's also on the website, and we'll put the, the, the link to the website in there one last time. But you know where to find us, because we found you, and that's why you're here. Good luck, and we'll see you this week. Check the homepage of the website for the timeline, which includes um, notification on when all these office hours are and other things. Um, and then keep your focus on the look and listen page where you can find the recording of this session, for example. And I'm I'm literally gunning for you. I'm very excited about our Nevada County applications. We're gonna do great. Yeah, and just a reminder, um, on Monday, we are running a, a discussion panel uh, titled Accessibility in the Arts, and it's a panel discussion for artists and agency applicants. And I just shared a link to the event page on the chat where you can register and find more information about it. I'm so glad that you mentioned that because we have such a great lineup of artists who are um, artists with special abilities and artists who um, make access their focus and so um it's going to be a really interesting discussion it's at 12 on monday and i think it'll help demystify what it means to um you know break down barriers um in terms of participation with your art or creative process it'll be great and again it'll be recorded so don't worry if you can't make it at that time thank you so much and we'll see you at the nail factory at the very least on thursday at 5 30 i'm so excited <laughs> Thank you so Bye. much. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.